All right, so in this video lesson, we're going to be talking about how you can utilize the Samantha font uh, inside Inkscape. And if you haven't heard about Samantha font, uh, I suggest going purchasing it. It is a great font. Uh, comes with all these nice cursive writings and little swirlies and flourishes uh, that you can use in order to make your design just pop, okay? So the drawback to all these swirly fonts is you're not able to... Uh, unlock its true potential um, and all these various special swirlies and uh, you know like this S here and the M here uh, they're put in basically like a location inside the font where most word processing machines cannot uh, utilize so you do need to either use a character map or uh, for this example I'm going to be showing you how you can do this with this program here called Babel Map, and it's a it's a really good program, uh, especially for getting these characters out. So I'm sort of going to show you how I utilize this in order to create what we just saw right there. So, uh, of course, you do need the Samantha font installed, and once you do, you, you'll be able to unlock its potential with this. So if you take a look here, you can think of all these grid squares are possible locations for fonts. And, uh, you know, right now I have the single font selected right here, and I chose the uh, Samantha Upright. So as you can see, I mean, uh, not all the fonts in your entire library utilize all the empty cells that it could possibly use. But the, the Samantha font uh, utilizes a lot of the private use block section. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead. Uh, what, what you're going to need to do is when you, when you download this, uh, it's going to automatically input every single font that you currently have installed. And you'll want to click this little button right here that says single font. Then the drop down menu, you should be able to uh, find your font, and in this case, it's Samantha Upright. So you can see right here, it's they do have it broken down into you know capitalization, lowercase, and I mean, some of these cells aren't being used, but the main area that we're going to focus in on is the they call it private use and. Uh, if you scroll all the way down here, you can type in the P's and you can get a, get a little closer. And we're looking for personal use, private use area right here. And this is where all the extra swirly cues and little flourishes uh, live. Okay, so for that example, uh, down here, you do have like a little edit pad or a little notepad down here. And you can type in what you want. So I'm just going to type in Merry Christmas. All right, so what I did was, I is, while I'm in the capital letters, you can isolate the area that you would like to exchange. So I'm going to highlight the M, and I'm just going to go ahead and scroll down till the, the M section, the capital M section. So uh, you can see these little windows, are, they're not quite clear. Some stuff's cut off, but what's great about this is you can right-click, and you'll be able to see the, uh, the font style that you would like to see in, in a nice little giant preview. So uh, you pick the one that you want. So say, yeah, I wanted this one, and you just double click. All right, so now that changed that M right here for me as one of the curly Q Ms that we just selected up here. Now for the S, I just did the same exact thing. I highlighted the S, and then, like I said, this thing is broken down into uh, uppercase and lowercase. So you, you just scroll down to the letter that you would need in the lowercase section and you know do the exact same thing so you'll you'll find the letter and then you can hover your mouse and right click to see what kind of s you would like so you know you can get like extremely fancy or you can choose something that's a little more subtle so for this one i'm just going to go ahead and select this and double click so now that we have everything we wanted uh, on here anyway i'm going to go ahead and highlight everything and I'm going to hit copy. So now it's on our clipboard. So now I can finally go back to Inkscape. And I'm going to go ahead and scroll over here. And we go to our text tool. Okay. And with your text tool selected, you'll go ahead and click anywhere. And I'm simply going to go up to Edit Paste. Okay. And when I do that, you'll notice that it really doesn't look like what we had on there. 
Well, that's fine because we can highlight everything here and we need to change our font type back to the Samantha. Okay, so we'll scroll down to the Samantha and choose that. So now, now we have everything on there. So we have our little M and then we also have our S. Now, if, if you take a look here, on at least on my screen, it looks like it's cut off. Well, it's really not, and it's and it's okay. You know, the M looks a little cut off, and you, you'll see here in a second. So the next thing that I did is uh, I went to the selection tool, selected the object here, and I went to path object to path. So now now it's a path, and now you see my curly cues are back. Okay. Now the the next thing that uh, we do need to do because if I go ahead and uh, take a look at this real quick, I'm going to go to View Display Mode Outline because if we remember, Outline allows us to see what our cutter is going to be looking for. And when I zoom in here and we take a look at these letters, we have we have overlap. Okay, and your cutter will cut into that Y unless we fuse them together or weld them together. So we do have to do that, but prior to doing any of that, uh, you may want to go, go and look at this, and you may want to move text, move letters the way you want them to appear. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to uh, the selection tool, and I'm going to go up to object, and then I'm going to ungroup it. And once I ungroup it, you'll see that uh, I am able to select individual letters. So sometimes you may have that S like this right here that really isn't connected to the letter, and we can fix that. So we'll, we'll zoom in here, and you know you may want to uh, take this S and just shift it over uh, just a little, you know, so it looks looks smooth, and then you can fine tune it. All right, so once you have everything the way that you want, and I'm going to go ahead and zoom out here again. Zoom back in. All right, so we have the Christmas, we have the Mary, and they're still all currently, um, you know, ungrouped. So let's go ahead, and this is the next step that I did, is I selected the Christmas, and I went up to Path, and then I went to Union. And so now we can see that the paths have now been fused together and it will cut out as one shape. All right, so th the other thing, I'm going to go ahead and go back to view display mode. I'm going to go back to normal. You can change the color if it helps you picture things by selecting the shape and going down to color. You can move it wherever you wish. And we, we do need to, to fuse the Mary as well. So we're going to go select a, the Mary and go up to path union. So once you have everything situated, uh, you can now go up to File, and then you can save this as an SVG.